we must desire to grow in power. Everybody say power. So we must desire, we must long for a dynamic relationship with Almighty God, a God who is omnipotent, that is much, much more than just mundane religious Christianity. Now, at the Jordan River, when Jesus prayed, we know that the heaven was opened and He was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's in Luke chapter 3, verse 21, 22. He was filled with the Spirit of God. And then chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus was not satisfied. He went on a 40-day fast and immediately there was acceleration. And the Bible says in verse 14 of chapter 4, Jesus returned in the power of of the Spirit to Galilee. See, He was filled, but He wasn't satisfied. There was a desire for more. So He went on a season of fasting. Then in Luke chapter 9 and verse 43, Jesus didn't just have power, He was moving in the mighty power of God. Now, you say, Pastor, you're trying to split hair over here with an adjective, but it's not just a common adjective. The word mighty in Greek means mega, glorious, perfect power. So he was moving in such intensity of the anointing. Nothing was impossible for him to heal, to deliver, to cast out. He was moving in the mighty power of God. And that must be our aim. We must desire to grow from power to power to power. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 14, the disciples were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were clothed or endued with power from on high. But they weren't satisfied. They kept praying and praying and praying. And by the time you come to Acts chapter 4, the Bible says they were moving in great power. You see, they were from power to great power. Acts 4, 33. But they didn't stop there. They went on the season of fasting. So like Jesus, they fasted, and now there's acceleration. So when you come to Acts chapter 13, the Holy Spirit spoke to them at the end of that fasting season, raised up Paul, and launched them out into world missions, and Christianity began to impact and transform the entire Roman Empire. You see, from being filled with the Spirit, to power, to great power, to mighty power, we must have a holy determination and a desire to encounter the power of God. See, maybe sitting here today, at one time you were on fire for God's power. You're excited about it. You're believing and trusting God for a, a miracle, for a sign of wonder. Maybe you're praying for healing. Somebody is sick. Maybe you're sick. And you prayed and you prayed, but the healing didn't come. The healing didn't come, didn't come, didn't come. The miraculous intervention for your situation didn't happen. What happened after that? You became very disappointed. You started withdrawing. You started moving back. You become introverted. And you have consigned Christianity to just a code of moral conduct. Because you're afraid, if I put my faith out there for the supernatural, what if it doesn't happen again. And then I will get disappointed with God. So I better play it safe. Let's just become nicey, nicey, gentler, kinder, more forgiving Christians and stop there. Friends, if our Christianity has no power, then what is the difference between us and all the other religions? You see, if it's just a set of moral conduct, you don't even need to be religious to learn a set of moral conduct. You know, without the presence of God's supernatural power, our faith is nothing more than just bland religion. Eventually, we'll all dry up. We'll all wither away. We'll just be another nice, kind, very goody-goody Christian. But, you know, devoid of any reality of God's uh, existence. And we are filled with doubts and unbelief because when we read the Bible, we just don't believe that everything Jesus did, everything Jesus said is possible in our life. We are just a religious person. First, second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 in the King James Bible, it says, 
according as His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. You see, everything that is given for our life and for our godliness is according to His divine power. You know what this tells me? Our advancement in life, your progress in life is based on power. Divine power. Our inner transformation to be more like Jesus. How many of you, by a show of hands, you want to be more like Jesus? Lift up your hands, right? Yeah. To be like Him in His holiness, in His godliness, in His purity. It's not just following a list of things that we have to do. It is only by His divine power. Our own self-efforts to change our inner desires our in will never be effective, will never be long-lasting. We can discipline ourselves to only a certain extent. But if you want total inner transformation, you need the power of God. So number one, He's the source of all power. Number two, He's the custodian of vision. He gives you the divine plan and purpose. Number three, He backs it up by giving you the Scripture so that you have the undying power to continue with the vision. And then, not only that, He gives you the, the ability to deliver the vision. It's not enough just to know a plan. It's not enough just to have revelation. You've got to have the ability to carry it out. You see, here, here in Zechariah 4 and verse 6, and he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Now, Zerubbabel was a governor, a very spiritual man. He already had a vision. He already heard the scripture. He had a revelation. The prophets have, have spoken to him and taught him the word. But God said, it is not by might, it's not by power, but it is by my spirit. Not by might, not by power, but by my what? Can't hear, by my what spirit? The Holy Spirit, says the Lord. That means the fulfillment of vision is not by human cleverness. It's not by our strategy. Right? Faith is not a strategy. It's not by our human abilities. It's by the supernatural power of God. Why? Because the power that stands in the way of our destiny, the force that stands in the way, is very demonic. The force that stands in your way is satanic. Only a demonstration of God's power is able to clear off all the opposition that stands in the way between you and your promised land. Friends, it's not enough just to know the plan. you got to have the ability to deliver it. Isaiah 45, verse 1. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held. Now Cyrus was a king, and God raised him up to let his people, the Jews, go back to Jerusalem. But there were a lot of obstacles. There were a lot of challenges. So God said to his anointed. So Cyrus had the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And this was what King Cyrus could do. Verse, verse 1, to subdue nations before him, to lose the armor of kings, to stand before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. God says, I will go before you. I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze. I will cut the bars of iron. This is what it means to be more than a conqueror. That means you are empowered to conquest, to conquer. You're empowered for conquest. So here was the king. And verse 3, I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. That means even when you go through a dark season, even when you go through darkness, you go through a season of financial hardship, marriage hardship, relationship hardship. You go through a challenging time, afflictions in your body, difficult times. Something good is going to happen. You are going to get treasures of darkness, hidden riches of secret places. 
That means you're going to come out with a victorious spirit. You're going to have a spirit of victory when you have the Holy Spirit in you. That you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. That means you will complete your life assignment on the earth. You will not fail. You will not be discouraged. The Spirit of God will give us supernatural inner strength and grace never to give up, but to keep on keeping on until we fulfill the assignment that God has set for us and fulfill our life destiny. Oh, come on, go ahead and praise God. I, Psalm 63, verse 1. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary. Looking for what? To see your power and your glory. And that's why I long for every week when I come to the sanctuary of God to see His power and His glory. Where His power is, His glory will be. Where His glory is, His power will be. The power of the kingdom only answers to demands. Desperate demands. Isaiah 41, verse 17. The poor and needy seek water and there is none. Their tongues fail for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. That means they are praying. They are crying out desperately. Oh God, empower me. Oh God, let me increase in the anointing. God, let me work signs and wonders to be like Jesus. See, there's a, there's a crying. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in desolate heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and dry land springs of water. The power of God answers to the demands of His people, of His children. If there is no demand, that means, you know, you have a, well, okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, whatever, whatever. Yeah, whatever. If you have this whatever attitude, then even when, you, when you're, you have a need, even when you're dry, you will not find fountains. When you're in the valley season, you will not find a pool of water when there's wilderness everywhere. You will not find springs of water when everything is so dry in your cell group, in your family, in your spiritual walk. If there's no demand, in 1986, when I was seeking God whether I should serve God in a full-time ministry of, uh, or not, you know, Pastor Randy Singh, a, a local evangelist, said, Kong, this is a big decision. Don't do it because friends are asking you to do it. You better do it if you have a calling from God. You better go and pray and fast. You know, I went for a two-week prayer and fasting. At the end of it, the Holy Spirit's power, boom, came upon me. And then I started my ministry and became a preacher. See, 2002, for one month, every, I, I was in Taiwan. Every day, I would walk from the NTU Indoor Stadium all the way to the Taipei City Hall as I would pray and walk every night. For one, two hours as I walk, I say, oh God, give me revival. God, give me a breakthrough. Then the, the, the young people in the Chinese-speaking world, the old people in the Chinese-speaking world, God, give me a breakthrough. Give me a breakthrough. I walk, and I kid you not, February, I believe February 2002, and there was an earthquake one time when I was there. And the Lord told me, He says, just relax. First of all, Taiwan is full of earthquakes. <laughs> but just relax. Say, so just realize, this is a sign for you that the gates of hell were trembling. Uh, and so I started praying, 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 praying. After one month of prayer walking, boom! The Holy Spirit empowered me. When we launched a crossover in 2004, uh, 2002, two months later, you know the rest is history. Hundreds of thousands came to Christ as a result of their effort. Come on, let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to clap? Let's give God a big clap.
Church, brothers, sisters, let me tell you this. God doesn't care of our po- about our pockets. He only cares about our person. Simon the magician said, he thought, well, with my money, I can buy the power of God. You know what? As far as God is concerned, our money can perish with us. But those who know their God shall be strong. That means when you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, now you know Him. Now you experience Him. You will be strong and you will do mighty things. Mighty, mighty exploits. And that is your destiny. You will become unstoppable, indomitable. It's not our human connection, who you know, what you know. It is our divine connection. How tight are we with the Spirit of God? 